These aren't Pepsis, they're Pepsi Twists. These were so not metal. Does this signify the death of heavy metal? <laughs> no, it's a whole new rebirth. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 WTF moments in heavy metal. Oh, I dreamt the kids turned into the husband. Number 10, no guitar solos for Metallica. Though fans were shocked when Metallica traded their long locks for shorter dues during the load era, they felt downright betrayed when the meddlers took the softer route to earn themselves mainstream success. To make matters worse, Metallica decided to drop the axe solos for a rawer sound on Saint Anger. But seriously now, what's a metal album without extended guitar pieces? Number 9. Ozzy Osbourne Does Reality TV And forget how to hate Though he's the godfather of heavy metal and the prince of darkness, Ozzy broke much of that spell when he allowed MTV's cameras to get up close and personal with his family. Stop it! I'll kick you all out. What's the matter with you? It's natural. When he wasn't spitting out expletives or being incoherent, the former Black Sabbath frontman showed viewers he wasn't really all there. Turn the thing up, it's driving me mad, man! He also admitted to being high throughout the whole show, which obviously explains a few things. The lights to the window. Number eight, Bruce Dickinson's sword fighting. But they, they didn't do boxing at school. So, um, fencing was the only thing where I could fight somebody. While flaunting his showmanship in Iron Maiden's live shows, Bruce Dickinson wowed critics and fans alike with a range that reached practically operatic proportions. However, extensive touring during the early 80s forced him to issue an ultimatum. No more dates or he was quitting. Dickinson then spent the next couple of months honing his fencing skills. Don't try this at home, kids, because he's a okay. professional. OK, all right, then, don't, if, don't say that, you'll get me banned. Right. He also picked up novel writing after the band rejected his material for Somewhere in Time. Number seven, Kip Winger's Thing for Tutus. Though he's mostly known for his glam metal days in Winger, his subsequent solo work, Kip Winger actually studied ballet as a teen, which ignited his passion for classical music. Though many metalheads are fans of this style, few of them expected him to write material for a ballet. While this may have clashed with his former rock and rep, Ghosts was a success and even had a second run. Number 6. Alice Cooper Becomes a Golf Addict Inspired by horror imagery, the godfather of shock rock crafted elaborate stage shows and dressed up to match. But like many rock stars before and after him, he also had his demons, including heavy alcohol dependency. He was at his worst when he turned to golfing as a last resort. I play every day. You know, we, we did 100 cities last year around the world. I played 75 times. He's now got his own golf tournament and has shared the green with pros like Tiger Woods. Stop. Number five, Puff Daddy and Jimmy Page come together. While Robert Plant received Grammy recognition for collaborating with bluegrass country singer Alison Krauss, Just say I'm gone. Gone, gone, gone. it's his Led Zepp bandmates moment with Diddy that still got us scratching our heads. Uh -huh. Appearing on the Godzilla movie soundtrack, Puff Daddy's version of Cashmere is a hip-hop and rap-rock number that features orchestral elements and Jimmy Page on guitar.
While it charted within the Billboard Top 50, it certainly did the original no favors. Def Leppard Pour Sugar on Taylor Swift. Known for her sweet little girl persona and for writing way too many songs about her ex-boyfriends, Taylor Swift is one of the biggest pop and country stars today. Meanwhile, Def Leppard was one of the 1980s hardest rockers. When the two artists teamed up on screen to sing each other's songs for CMT Crossroads in 2008, it had many of us thinking they should have said no. Number 3. Pat Boone's In A Metal Mood this old-fashioned rock and roller has had almost 40 top 40 hits on the pop charts. Take our love letters from the sand. So when Pat Boone took on some hard rock and heavy tunes in a swing and jazz-influenced style, many were shocked and others offended. No more Mr. Nice Guy. They say he's sick. He's a CD. The fact that he also donned black leather didn't help matters. It even got him briefly kicked off a gospel-themed TV show. Now I'd like to introduce you to the future of heavy metal, Pat Boone. <laughs> Alice, they're laughing at you. You're looking what good. Number two, Vince Neil dances like a chicken. Then make some name, some noise, and welcome to the stage for Motley Crue, Vince Neil! Two years after the Motley Crue frontman was one of the celebrity has-beens on The Surreal Life. I think people learn that there's a, there's a Vince Neil, then there's Vince. You either love me or you hate me. I'm the biggest ass in the world or the nicest guy in the world. Vince Neil embarrassed himself and fans of the world's most notorious rock band at the Oktoberfest Cincinnati. As Grand Marshal of the world's largest chicken dance, he took to the stage to show Cincinnati residents how to cluck like a hen, flap your wings, and wiggle your tail feathers. Need we say more? Jethro Tull makes Grammy history. In the dark of the city, backwards, In order to capitalize on the genre's popularity, the Grammys recognized the past year's best hard rock and metal performance for the first time in 1989. But when prog rockers Jethro Tull won the trophy for Crest of Knave, beating out frontrunner and one of thrash metal's big four Metallica in the process, Darkness imprisoning me. Metal fans and music critics were enraged. Not only did few people think the band was on par with the other nominees, many also felt they didn't fit in hard rock or metal. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the least heavy metal moment in history? Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com for more entertaining top tens. Sugar me.